Thakur. Om Namo Bhagati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagati Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagati Vasudevaya. We can't hear you. He's um, given over the period of time that he was with us with um, in this world. So probably the most uh, valuable for us uh, are those that center around fault fighting because um, this is a really common uh, issue everybody faces and he's got uh, some incredible instructions so he says let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemies <laughs> this is uh, uh, such an incredible instruction and uh, if we can ever imagine ourselves to be in this situation we'll be very peaceful because we won't want anything bad to happen to anyone, even our worst enemy. So, and this is of course a quite a, a challenging uh, mindset to have. But if one does have it, then one will be always happy. Um, let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemy. So, um, we go through so many challenging situations. And why does he say this? Because it's not the person who is causing us the difficulty. He's not the origin of that problem. The origin of the problem is us ourselves because of our past karma. So a person may inflict some damage on us, apparently. But that damage, he's just the instrument. The damage has already been done uh, by ourselves in the past. So now we are just suffering the consequence. And somebody's delivering that karma to us. That's all it is. So it's not that person that we should be angry towards because that person himself hasn't done anything to us. We've done it to ourselves already. So this is why this instruction is there. Be indifferent to bizarre gossips. Stick firmly to your cherished goals. No lack or impediments of the world will ever stand in your way. So we are very used to having a good natter. <laughs> Could gossip about something or somebody. Prabhuji. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we get great joy. Great joy from all these bazaar gossips, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's such an enjoyable thing. But <laughs> very naughty, very naughty puja. <laughs> I'm not much into it, but I'm just saying that people get a great enjoyment out of all that. Yeah, they, they do, they do, absolutely. And um, but it's, if we can avoid it, it's the weakness which, of the mind, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And association, you know, if if we have that sort of association, where you know, hey, did you hear what they've been up to? And you know, we're just going to be down the wrong track, uh, even if we want to stay on the um, straight and narrow. If our association isn't uh, straight and narrow, we'll struggle. <laughs> and as you said, the mind, it gets attracted. You know, as Nani Ben said, it's very joyful <laughs> to hear some gossip. And uh, sticking to our goals, you know, hey, got to get it done. You know, I'm not going to get di di diverted by anything. I need to progress with my spiritual life. If we stick to these two things, be indifferent to bizarre gossip and stick to our goals, there will be nothing which will stand in our way. Like the Lord will make sure of that. Look within. Amend yourself rather than 
prying into the frailties of others. This is a really nice one because when we point a finger, three fingers are pointing straight back at us. So rather than pointing the fingers, it's better to look at ourselves. Generally, it's said that when we see a criticism in others, that criticism is in ourselves. That's why we can see it in others. So we're always looking for faults in others, right? That's almost like a natural behavior. You say, almost like a human behavior. But it won't do us any good because the faults are in us anyway. <laughs> we have to look at ourselves because that's where the issues are. The Lord Gora Sundar puts his devotees in diff various difficulties and associations to test their patience and strength of mind. Success depends on their good fortune. <laughs> so these things we see as tests that, yes, of course, I've got a tough situation. It's a tough challenge coming my way now. How should I deal with it? Shall I fall apart or shall I just fight? Never give up. This is one thing Guru Maharaj really drilled into us. Never gave up. He himself in his life went through so many challenges. He never gave up. Never gave up. So he's uh, given us this uh, this this uh, wonderful, you know, example, wonderful training over the years how to withstand whatever's coming. Let it come. What to do? You can't stop the uh, the thunderbolts coming. But how you deal with them is is a different matter. Yeah, Guru Maharaj's life is really a wonderful example of somebody who's never gave, he had so many up right from his childhood. Um, you know, took initiation at a young age, even that was at a protest by, there was so much protest. Took sannyas, there was so much protest. Family wanted, uh, there was some parts of the family who were ready to kill him. <laughs> Um, even within ISKCON, so many challenges came his way. But he never gave up. Never gave up. When faults in others misguide and delude you, have patience. Introspect, find faults in yourself. Know that others cannot harm you unless you harm yourself. <laughs> We often think, ah, oh, because of him, I'm struggling. No, because of we, because of us, we're struggling. Because of ourselves, we're struggling. This is really powerful. This can make us very, very strong in our determination. If we follow these instructions of Bhakti Siddhanta, no one can harm us apart from ourselves. Why would we harm ourselves? In this world of Maya, averse to the Lord, full of trials and tribulations, only patience, humility, and respect for others are our friends. Oh, Hari Bhajan. So this is what we want to continue, Hari Bhajan. When we wake up in the morning, are we keen to chant? That's a really good test of... Uh, um, yes, Nariman. Yes, it says that nobody can harm you unless you harm yourself. So we harm ourselves because, because we already harmed ourselves from our past karma. That's why some harm is coming our way. Mm. Uh, mm. This is more, yeah, that's definitely that's part of it. Definitely part of it. But it's possibly more saying that if, say, if, say, we're going through a difficult situation, um, and we are thinking it's because of this person that this difficult situation has arisen, then we harm ourselves because it's not that person who is the cause of the difficulty. It's our karma. Mm -hmm. So like you said, karma, we've already caused the harm to ourselves. No point blaming the instrument of that karma. 
because the Lord has just used somebody to uh, deliver what is due to us, whether it's good or bad. Isn't it? What do you think, Nandiman? Yes, that's what that's what I am thinking. That unless mm. you harm yourself, already harm yourself in the past. Mm. Yeah, but it's it's hard to uh, hard to comprehend because yes, of course, yeah, <laughs> we are always being harmed by the others. And unless, like something, when you are at work, somebody harms you, you have to sort of stand up to yourself. To, to oh, yourself. yeah, but that's okay. That's allowed. That's okay. Defense, yeah, defense is allowed. If somebody tries to roll you over, uh, uh, it's not that we don't defend ourselves, but we don't get anxious that I got rolled over. <laughs> I got mugged by this person and I couldn't stop it. And now I am going to kill that person. That, that will harm ourselves, right? But if we can, if we, if we're being mugged, there's nothing that uh, says we can't stop us, stop it. You know, if we attack, we can defend. We have the right to defend. It makes sense then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we always have the right to defend ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, and also like uh, if um, someone's done something wrong, if you spend your time thinking about that, mm. it's it's That's then cool. you you go into a negative cycle as well. Uh, you don't uh, find any positives out of that, or you, you, you don't try to um, uh, step back from that situation. You're always thinking of that situation, and you know all your time, even like like while chanting or whatever, you're always thinking about that. So again, that that is harming yourself, harming your sadhana, harming your bhakti. And actually, there's two things which uh, can really help when um, reverses come. I mean, I just had a, early this week, I uh, just had a, a bit of a, a situation that happened. And it could have led me into, um, you know, perhaps in a bit of a sulk or something like that. But, depression. or depression possibly, yeah. Because yeah. it, was, it was quite a big thing in one sense. But there was two things which I, I kept in mind, which uh, made me easy, let me easily go, go through this situation. One is, I know that God or Krishna will not do anything which is not good for me, right? I know he will always look after my interest. So if something's going to happen to me which is against me, it's still good for me because Krishna has sanctioned it and he won't do anything which is against my ultimate good, right? Because he's my oh, ever well wisher. Yeah. It's like a warning sign from him. Possibly a warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the second thing is gratitude. Yes, this reverse has happened, but my goodness, he's given me so much. Why should I worry if something is lost? There's so much he's given. <clears throat> so that gratitude. And gratitude that, thank you for letting this happen. As Jain just said, it's maybe a lesson to be learned from it. <clears throat> so those two things always help when we're going through a re reversal in our life. Gratitude and uh, understanding that he will never do anything which is against my best interest. So, so, this, so whatever the negativity is, we look for the positivity within it, as Jainti just said. And yes, as I was saying, if we wake up in the morning and we don't want to chant, then we've got a problem. Yeah, we've got a problem. We've got a problem that... Um, our patience, our humility and respect for others are, are, are uh, not at the level that they should be. If we wake up in the morning and think, fantastic, I'm going to chant. That's all I'm going to do right now for the next whatever it is, whatever we want to set ourselves. And we go through the chanting and later on in the day, whenever there's the opportunity, we continue chanting. 
It's a good sign. It's good. Many devotees over the years lose this taste of chanting. We have to really guard and protect ourselves, our bhakti, especially this chanting of the holy names. Water that wonderful seed that's been sown um, in this garden of devotion. Yeah? And the chanting is the most important thing. So protect it. When we wake up, even if you don't feel like it, mm -hmm. say, I love to chant, I want to chant, and I get to chant. Those three things are very nice. And really, it's such an honor to be able to chant mm -hmm. the holy names. <laughs> chant the Mahamant aloud, loudly, and with attachment. This will drive away inertia, worldly evils, and pests. <laughs> uh, he had a word way with words. Huh? <laughs> All right. So I think I, I I consider these as probably the most important instructions. Because it really is all about self-development. Self-protection, mm. isn't it? Our consciousness. Very powerful. Okay, let's see what else he's got. A lot of these will be repeated, actually. We are put to test and trial in this world. Only those who attend the kirtan of the devotees can succeed. Every spot on earth where discourse on God are held is a place of pilgrimage. <laughs> so Zoom <laughs> is officially a place of pilgrimage. <laughs> Possession of objects not related to Krishna is our main uh, malady. So, preferably everything we have should have a connection with God. Preferably. Quite tough, very tough. And how do we connect it to God? If you buy something, actually, this is a good one. If we buy anything, you buy a phone, you buy a watch, you buy clothes, clothes, offer it to God. That's the connection. He's connected. He's got no choice <laughs> but to accept it. <laughs> we offer it, he accepts. So the connection is there. So everything we buy, anything we buy, we offer it to God. That's the connection. It becomes Pashat. Let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemies. As the alliance with the body in luxury increases, so wanes the spirit of service of the Lord. So luxury, un, un, you know, too much luxury really destroys our uh, bhakti lata beach. Because <laughs> we get enamored by the material energy. Oh, how nice this world is. <laughs> So this point about people who don't have luxuries, they're very fortunate, actually, if you don't have money. <laughs> it seems like a curse, but actually, if one is God conscious, it's a blessing. Of course, it can be a curse if one is always thinking, how do I get money? Those favored by God find their paths set by thorns. <laughs> is there anybody who's come into this spiritual consciousness and everything's hunky-dory. There might be a few very fortunate souls. But generally speaking, if you look at the Pandavas, they were great devotees of the Lord, but they had a really challenging lives. Kunti Mata were a great devotee, but beset with issues and problems and challenges. <laughs> Just because we become devotees of God doesn't mean he's going to Wave, uh, wave a magic wand and every problem of ours disappears. That's not his purpose. His purpose is to make us fall in love with him. So we will have difficult times. Often people think, oh man, I've come to this spiritual life and I should have just stayed in my material life. It's so much easier. <laughs> I must admit, about nine months ago, 
we were really having a great time. We were just doing these seminars and I was just studying for the seminars and delivering them and it was so good. And then somebody gave us opportunity to buy a center. So we bought a center. Now we were renovating it. And um, in, in Vandavan, we came, we came to associate with Trikalagya and so many different, and so many headaches. Every day I'm thinking, crikey, wow, another headache. Actually, it's, pretty, it's not a real headache. It's, it's actually joyful, but it's so many challenges. And I'm thinking, crikey, nine months ago, I was sitting so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> And now every day something going on. You know? <laughs> anyway, what to do? I'm not complaining, uh, by the way, my dear Lord. <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> Please keep it coming. I really, I like it. I like the challenges. It's good. It's good. There is no peace or happiness in our worldly life. Circumstances create turmoil and annoyance. Even if we were peaceful and happy, it's not going to last, not in this world. There's something called death. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's, it's, such a, uh, it's such a hard stop, death. It just finishes everything, you start all over again. Chant the Muhammad loudly and with attachment, this will drive away inertia, worldly evils and pests. So be indifferent, oh yeah, we've done this one, to bizarre gossip, stick firmly to your cherished goals, no lack or impediments of the world will ever stand in your way. Pay due respects to the extroverts of the world, but do not be appreciative of their manners and conduct. They are to be shaken off from your mind. <laughs> hmm. Interesting, I haven't really thought too much about this one. A devotee feels the presence of God everywhere, but one averse to the Lord denies his existence anywhere. Yeah, this is the two opposite scales of uh, devotee and non-devotee, a believer of the Lord and an atheist. You cannot appreciate transcendental matters with the reasoning of the world. It's sheer nonsense to decry them with the measuring stick of your intellect. <laughs> He's so uh, clear in his words, isn't he? <laughs> we try to understand Krishna with our tiny little brain. I mean, Guru Maharaj was always very clear about this. You know? <laughs> what can your tiny, puny brain understand about the Lord? <laughs> So we try to understand the Lord within our intelligence, but it's very difficult. That's why he's inconceivable for us. We'll never get to the bottom of the Lord, but it's okay. We don't want to. Let him be inconceivable. Let us just fall in love with him. That's enough. To recite the name of Sri Krishna is bhakti. Life is for glorification of topics on Hari. If that is stopped, then what need is there to carry on life? So this is uh, sometimes uh, Guru Maharaj used to say, old age is a curse. <laughs> and it is a curse if we're not careful, because in old age, uh, in old age, you know, it's very difficult to do any bhakti. That's why Guru Maharaj always said, do it now, don't wait. There's this, uh, I think we, we sort of listened to it the other day about Guru Maharaj's point that um, when you get old, you'll be coughing away. <coughs> you know, we'll be demanding so many things. Give me a glass of water. Or give me some food. Take me to the loo. The children will be thinking, this old man, when is he going to die? Even during the time of Prabhupada, I have to say this, you know, it's, there was one devotee, Prabhupada said it himself, he was praying for Prabhupada to die. 
Prabhupada was in his last uh, few months, it was quite a terrible situation in terms of the body, because he's transcendental to the body. But Prabhupada said, there's one devotee in this room who's praying for my death. <laughs> so we shouldn't become a burden on our children, etc. But we should do bhakti as much as you can while we still can. Who knows what will happen in our old age? We might become incapacitated, cannot do anything. And then we'll be crying, ah, oh, I wish I'd done more bhakti, more devotion and service. Too late. Now is the time to do it. This is what Guru Mahal said, now is the time to do it. Don't wait until tomorrow, do it now. <laughs> Very powerful. Physical illness with Hari Bhajan is preferable to physical fitness without Hari Bhajan. <laughs> this is again Guru Mahal's uh, great example. He had a quadruple bypass operation in, was it 1985 or 86? 86 or no. 87. 87. 87. And that's when his spiritual life took off. <laughs> well, he was always spiritual, but that's when his preaching uh, life took on, took off. He was always preaching before, but then he started going to different countries. First country he went to was South Africa and Mauritius. After the operation, first time he ever went. And he never stopped. Every single year, he'd go for three, four months to those countries and many others as well. So yes, physical illness, we can see it as a curse. But if it's combined with Bhari Bhajan, then that's better than being fit without any God consciousness. But while we are fit, it's better to do the bhakti. Because who knows, physical illness will come and can disrupt everything we do. Our span of life on earth is short. Our life will be crowned with success if the body wears out with constant discourses on Hari. Ah, oh, such an amazing quote. Yeah, let this body die in the service of the Lord. Let it, let it get worn out. Let us be so much engaged in bhakti that we wear this body out. That's the success. That's our success. Let's die penniless, everything gone in the service of the Lord. That's our success. Nothing left, even the last breath of air is for him. That's our success. This is really incredible instructions. We are here on earth not to work as artisans for making big buildings with wood and stone, but to work only as messengers for the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Dev. Really nice. What's this? A psychopath is neither a guru or a preacher. I'm not sure what that means, actually. Have a look. To transform the adverse desires of the jivas is a supreme duty of the most merciful. To rescue one person from the stronghold of Mahamaya is an act of superb benevolence far superior to opening innumerable hospitals. Wow. Even if we go out and give a book to one person, that person comes to the town. I, I remember I used to, me, me and Jendi used to go out, like not this year, I haven't been last Two year, we haven't yeah, been the year before, yeah. I used to go and distribute, and I used to distribute like 20, 30, 40 books, and she'd distribute like two or three. And I always used to laugh at her. But then the two or three she'd distribute, the person that she would give it to would invariably come to the temple. In fact, one of them, her name is Habiba. Um, 
not only she came to the temple, but she stayed. <laughs> she continued. Now she's still chanting. This is three years ago, at least, mm -hmm. right? Chanting 16 rounds, reading every day Bhagavad Gita. Really extraordinary. You know, black-bodied devotee. Really amazing. Muslim. And then there was a Muslim. No, and she, she was, was a, a Muslim, Muslim as well, mm -hmm. yeah. No, she was brought up as Christian. She but, turned Muslim. Mm -hmm. And then there was another occasion, there was another Muslim boy who came and she gave him a Gita and he later on he said, this is what I've been looking for all my life. You know? And he was started chanting, we've lost touch with him now, but, uh, and then many, many, he would always give books to somebody who'd uh, be really interested. So this is great if we can bring one, even just one person towards the Supreme Lord. Krishna becomes very, very pleased. Why does he become so pleased? Because why does he become so pleased? Because like somebody gave a nice class. He was saying, if Bill Gates, his daughter was lost and she'd lost her memory, she didn't know who she, uh, what family she was born in, that her father was a very rich man. And she was just loitering in some street, living on the streets. And if we know that person, Bill Gates, and we knew that this person, this, his, this is his daughter, and we said to the daughter, I know your father. I can show you where he lives. I can take you back to him. Do you want to go back? And she says, yes. And when we take that person back, how much happy will the father be to see the lost child? So in the same way, God becomes very pleased when um, uh, somebody directs his lost children back to him. Very, very pleased. This is... Uh, in the Gita, he says it in 16, 1868, he says, Yadim Paramam Guyam, right? Um, the one who discloses this supreme secret to my devote, to the devotees is very dear to me. And then in the next verse, 1869, he says, There is no servant more dear to me than he. Nor will there ever be one more, more dear. <laughs> So this is really very powerful. So we should always try to help others come closer to Krishna as, as far as we can, yeah? whatever situation we're in. If we desire that, Krishna always makes that arrangement. Unless we're devoted to God, secularism shall not leave us. Look within, amend yourself, rather than pry into the frailty of others. In this world of Maya, Averse to the Lord, full of tribulations, only patience, humility, and respect for others. Are our friends worry about it? The yeah. Lord God of Sundar yeah, put his devotees in various difficult associations to test his their patience and strength of mind. Okay, we can stop. Okay, success depends on their difference. Um, there's quite a lot left actually. So maybe let's carry on tomorrow as well, if that's okay with the devotees. Um, and then we can post tomorrow. Christmas Day. Happy Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully everybody will be okay to come tomorrow. Um, let's just see where we were. 20, 23. 23. Yeah, 23. Any, any questions, any comments? Final comments, questions? Otherwise, we can start. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Shakur Maharaj, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.